Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Beth Jones. And I'm Peter Dubois. First tonight, we are learning more about interactions between law enforcement and suspected Lewiston shooter Robert Card, including at least one instance of contact between him and the Sagadoc Sagadahawk County Sheriff's Office. According to a statement from Sheriff Joel Mary, Robert Card's family contacted the Sheriff's Office on May 3rd of this year out of concern for his well-being, saying his mental health had started to decline back in January and that he had access to firearms. After speaking with the family, the Sheriff's Office then contacted Card's Army Battalion, who told them and the family that they would ensure Card got medical attention medical attention. Then in September, Card's Army Reserve Unit in Saco emailed the Sheriff's Office asking them to do a wellness check for Card. Sheriff Mary says a deputy attempted a wellness check on September 15th, but Card was not home. An alert was sent out to law enforcement to be on the lookout for Card and that he was known to be, quote, armed and dangerous. Another attempt was made the next day, and while Mr. Card's vehicle was at the location, no one answered the door despite repeated knocking. Deputies reported hearing sounds inside the home, though, while they were there. Finally, the sheriff's office says they made contact with Card's unit commander, who advised them Card no longer had any weapons from the reserve unit, and they were trying to get him treatment, but it might be better to, quote, give him time by himself. They also spoke to Card's brother, who told them he would, quote, work to secure any firearms that Card had access to. The sheriff's office went on to say, quote, we believe our agency acted appropriately and followed procedures. My office will evaluate our policies and procedures for how we conduct wellness checks with the goal of making any improvements that are in the interest of public safety while balancing the rights of individuals. Our hearts are breaking for the families and friends of the people who were killed and injured, end quote. In response to last week's events, one Auburn lawmaker has submitted an act to increase availability of mental health care facilities in Maine. The act would directly repeal Maine's certificate of need specifically in regards to mental health services. Certificates of need are laws that serve to regulate major capital expenditures for certain health care facilities. The primary objective is to help prevent duplicate costs and determine whether the community is in need of a purchase. We have such dire dire needs for expanded mental health care options in Maine and opportunities for folks to get the care they need that I don't want to see <laughs> bureaucratic red tape like certificate of need standing in the way of folks getting the care they need. The newly submitted bill currently waits, awaits review by committee. An update now to a story we brought you yesterday. An arrest has been made after an investigation into threats made to area schools in Fairfield. The Fairfield Police Department says that Edward Daw, a 32 year old from Fairfield now living in Oklahoma, allegedly made threats on MS 8049 social media accounts. Because of the concerning nature of those threats, schools were closed yesterday while police searched for who posted them. After the investigation, Daw was taken into custody in Oklahoma City and charged with terrorism hoax and violation of the Oklahoma Computer Crimes Act. Both charges are felonies in Oklahoma, and he is now being held at the Oklahoma County Detention Center on a $1 million bond. In the wake of the Lewiston mass shootings, we're hearing countless stories of community members stepping up in a time of need. Our Corey Bouchard spoke with a neighboring business of one of the shooting locations about what they experienced and how they helped survivors. When 40-year-old Robert Card opened fire at the just-in-time bowling alley on Wednesday night, many survivors that fled took off on foot. Some of them made their way next door to Marco's, an Italian restaurant. There was people coming in from different directions of the building, and um, they had come in and... Um, once they kind of got their heads together, um, they locked the doors and shut off the lights to try to defer anyone from, you know, coming to the restaurant thinking there's any activity going on. His partner and some employees tried to help any way they could, providing beverages, a place to sit, or trying to provide some level of comfort while police searched for the gunman. Probably just like anyone, they were just wondering, like, what the heck is going on? And then at the time, there were all kinds, I, I was getting texts from people that, you know, obviously know that our building is close. Um, I was getting texts from people that something happened over here, something happened over here, something happened over there. 
And my thoughts were as multiple people at the time. Became, so no one really knew what was going on because of all this, I guess, false information. Arnold was glad that his people were there, but also has faith that anyone in their situation would have tried to help. I think it's something that anyone would do. It's um, so, I mean, it's great that, you know, they were able to go somewhere safe, anywhere it would be. But I think anyone would respectfully do that. In Lewiston, I'm Corey Bouchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. A Madison man who was arrested in connection with a murder pleaded not guilty during his arraignment this morning. Roland Flood was arraigned in Somerset County Superior Court this morning. He's been accused of murdering his roommate, Mark Trebu of Anson. Flood is being charged with intentional or knowing or alternatively depraved indifference murder. He's being held without bail at Somerset County Jail. Meanwhile, the Orono Fire Department is teaming up with the Maine Forest Service to help local residents protect their homes from wildfires. Our Grace Blanchard explains. Wildfires can spread in seconds, and the Orono Fire Department is working to protect their community from them by performing wildfire risk assessments. For the town of Orono, this is kind of our first uh, stab at this. Uh, we are uh, hoping to bring to light some of the concerns that we may have for the community out in this area. This past summer, the department received training through the Maine Wildlife Reduction Assessment Program alongside members of the Maine Forest Service. It's a good way to educate homeowners on things that they can do to reduce the risk of a wildfire coming from the forest and getting near the homes. According to the Maine Forest Service, Maine is the most forested state in the U.S. and averages 658 wildfires each year. Uh, embers can travel for miles, and if homes aren't ready for those, uh, as far as uh, roof cover, uh, making sure that uh, the leaf debris and stuff is cleaned up, uh, those are all ignition points. Residents can volunteer to have their property assessed for risk levels, and many are welcoming the program. The things that we can do around our homes to uh, help mitigate or prevent fires um, just makes everybody everybody safer. For more information on the program and safety tips, head to our website, foxbangor.com. You do some of these recommendations, you have a lot less to worry about. And, uh, In Orno, Grace Blanchard for ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Oh. Certainly can't be careful enough. I mean, we're walking around outside every single day with our animals. We see all of the dried debris yep. strewn, about, strewn about on the ground and on people's properties as well. So there's unfortunately plenty of fuel around right now. Yeah, and just this time as we transition into the colder months, mm -hmm. it's just a great time to talk fire safety, general fire safety, yeah. as people are starting to turn on the heat in their inside their homes as well. Yes, yeah, so definitely risks outside, risks inside that you just want to be aware of. Of course. Alrighty, well, let's go ahead and get a first check of our forecast and see what's coming our way weather wise. Thank you so much. Our first weather is brought to you by Winterport Sheds. Do you need extra storage, a place to live, camp on your lot, building for your pets? Well, check them out in Waterport or at the Bangor Mall and, of course, at winterportsheds.com. All right, guys, once again, we are back in the 40s today. Up north, though, much cooler temperatures. Greenville, Millinocket area, only in the 30s. There is a little bit of a snowpack, of course, keeping things a bit cooler there. We do have a bit of a breeze, not too bad, though, around 9 Nine miles per hour in town, eight in Bar Harbor, seven in Rockland, a bit stronger in Waterville though. We're looking at a solid 12 mile per hour sustained wind. But overall though, the snow and rain is finally gone. Today we just had to make sure some clouds and sun, mainly sunny out there. Temperatures back in the 40s in our area. Overnight tonight though, we're going to see a few passing clouds here and there. The winds aren't really going to be an issue, but temperatures will be cooling back off into those mid 20s. Thank you so much, Conrad. And coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, automotive right to repair is on the ballot in Maine. We'll hear arguments for and against the measure. That story and more as ABC 7 News at 6 comes right back. Do you have a wet basement, nasty crawl space, settling foundation, sinking concrete, or clogged gutters? I'm Tony Hafford with TC Hafford Basement Systems, all things basementy. For over 30 years, thousands of homeowners throughout Maine and southeastern New Hampshire have trusted T.C. Hafford. Basement waterproofing, crawl space repair, stabilizing foundations, concrete leveling, and gutter installation. Call T.C. Hafford Basement Systems for all things basementy. There's too much uncertainty around pine tree power. 
It's a mystery bag that will cost Mainers billions. It will mean tremendous uncertainty for workers, say Maine's labor leaders. Business leaders say it will mean higher rates with no guarantee of better service. And Governor Mills says, let's not gamble with our future. Vote no on question three. Please join leading Maine voices and vote no on three. It's a bad idea for Maine. If you or a loved one has been diagnosed with mesothelioma or asbestos-related lung cancer, contact the law offices of Joe Bornstein to learn about your legal rights. Maine has the highest rate of mesothelioma fatalities in the U.S. You may be eligible to receive compensation if you were exposed to asbestos products while working in a shipyard, mill, factory, or construction site. For a free case evaluation, dial 207-CALL-JOE or online at joebornstein.com. What about this one? Wire brush finish. I love this style. And the price is amazing. It's got two removable leaves. And the bench has storage. <laughs> Honey, do you like this table? It's yours if you like it. She's thinking. Sure. Oh, my Bob, she loves it! <laughs> she loves us! <laughs> Probably. When you don't have to compromise on style, quality, or price, there's only one thing to say. Oh, my Bob! Bob's Discount Furniture. <laughs> ready that home run, son. Hey, pass me the keys, Rob. I haven't had anything to drink. Good idea. We've learned to speak up to prevent drinking and driving. Now let's speak up to prevent texting and driving. What are you doing, Mommy? Here, let me do that for you. <laughs> <gasps> so sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Speak up. Lives depend on it. Don't drive intoxicated. Don't drive intoxicated. A sobering message from AAA. You are watching WVII, ABC7, Lewiston Strong. Welcome back. Question four on the ballot asks voters if they want to put automotive right to repair into Maine state law. Tonight, we hear arguments on each side of the proposed measure. Question four would require vehicle manufacturers to provide owners and repair shops with remote access to their vehicle's diagnostic systems. Proponents of question four, like CEO of VIP Tires and Service Tim Winkler, say the right to repair ultimately gives people freedom to take their vehicles to the mechanic of choice or repair it themselves. This is not just about consumer choice, it's also about affordability and access. That's the third issue is access. You have areas in Maine where there aren't a lot of car dealerships. And so for those people, they depend on their local independent repair shop to be able to do all the repairs required on their car. Representative Tiffany Roberts, who serves as House Chair of the State Legislature's Innovation, Development, Economic Advancement and Business Committee, disagrees. Passing a, you know, whether intentional or not, ill-conceived bill is, is not going to do anything but put a lot more work on the committee's hands to try yeah. to figure out what to, how to remedy any potential issues. Representative Roberts argues the right to repair already exists in Maine thanks to previous agreements made, such as a 2014 Memorandum of Understanding requiring vehicle manufacturers share diagnostic and repair data with independent shops in all 50 states. Do you think that the agreements go far enough? I believe that they do. Um, I've spoken to everyone from industry, to dealerships, to independent repair shops who were part of the original right to repair in 99 who feel that these agreements have given them what they need. But Winkler says the agreements don't go far enough because they aren't enforceable by law, leaving the door open for violations. A memorandum of understanding really is only just that. It really doesn't provide the protection that consumers and independent repair shops need. So it's sort of like a trust process. So to assume that just putting out a, a general letter of understanding is going to address this issue going forward, I think is naive. That's We need to have a law that protects consumers' choice in where they have their vehicle repaired. And I, I believe that this law does that. Winkler also says that most new vehicles made today store certain data wirelessly, making it impossible to access information needed to diagnose what's wrong with a vehicle. One of the 
examples that people use is we all used to use corded headphones. Now we all use wireless headphones, right? And so car manufacturers are no different. They're starting to use technology to build a lot of wireless technology into the vehicles. If passed, question four would make that wireless data accessible through a standardized access platform, such as an online portal. But Representative Roberts thinks creating that platform could be problematic. This doesn't exist. So is, is Maine supposed to create that? Like who, and then an, an independent entity created, appointed by the government, so is it independent? That has never existed, but it has very strict guidelines on who should be included and what it should do. Maine voters will make the final decision on question four on November 7th. So one of many decisions voters will face Absolutely. next week. Yep, another contentious one for mm -hmm. sure. All right. Well, still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, our Kelly Warren takes us to a house in Dover Foxcroft that is going full blast for Halloween. And in sports, Maine field hockey is gearing up for the playoffs, but on a completely different side of the standings than in recent years. We'll have that story right after the break. To build the Honda CRV hybrid, we took everything you love about the CRV and kicked it up a notch with greater power. For a CRV unlike any before, adventure confidently with the most fuel efficient full line automaker over the last five years. The CRV and CRV hybrid part of the Honda line of rugged vehicles. Visit your local Honda dealer where new vehicles are arriving daily. Buy online or reserve from select Honda dealers. AAA Insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA Auto Insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA Insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. It's your journey. Own every mile in the Hyundai Santa Fe with America's best warranty. Lease an all-wheel drive Santa Fe for $279 a month or get 0% APR plus zero payments for 90 days. Hurry in. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Diversified Ink Tattoo Studio in Bangor, located in the Penobscot Plaza, providing custom ink by licensed artists for more than 20 years. And everyone, happy Halloween. Thank you for staying with us. We're going to start with the big news of the day. Sports betting is finally here in Maine, or at least it will be this week. The Department of Public Safety and the Maine Gambling Control Unit announcing this morning that betting will be live this Friday. Beginning tomorrow, licensed operators can start pre-launch advertising and they can begin accepting registrations and account deposits. And then at 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, you can place your first bets. What a way to start the day. In the state's four indigenous tribes have exclusive access to mobile betting. Right now, we know that three of those tribes have partnered with Caesars Sportsbook. So with those apps downloaded, let's go to the Bruins now. Boston winning their eighth game of the season last night. They are now 8-0. 
0-1 on the year, and they've reached the nine-game mark, so it's decision time regarding 19-year-old Matthew Potras. And the rookie will be staying with the big league club and not going back to juniors. In nine games so far, Potras has three goals and two assists. He is plus four on the ice and is averaging about 15 minutes of ice time a night. He's been huge sliding into a center role with the Bees short at that position since the retirement of Patrice Bergeron. This morning, Jim Montgomery telling media members that the kid has simply been helping them win hockey games. He's sticking around. I think, you know, he, his play, he earned it, right? Um, I think we're comfortable with him. Uh, you know, he's there's still no guarantees here the rest of the year, you know, but we feel that the way he's progressed that, you know, for the time being, he's going to be a Bruin and he's helping us win hockey games. All right, and that is the most important part. Let's head up to Orono now. Black Bear Field Hockey getting ready to head down to New Hampshire for their first round America East tournament game on Thursday. The Black Bears are the sixth seed in the tourney after losing five of their last six conference games. They were unbeaten in conference a year ago. They're getting shut out twice in that span this year. So, But even with that, the team is seeing major growth lately with the way they possess the ball, the way they move the ball. So with that being at a high level, the Black Bears believe creating scoring chances will be much easier come Thursday. We've had a few great moments in the games of offensive play, and we're just trying to build off that, those possession plays and moving um, the ball from the back up. We've had major growth since the beginning of the year, and I think it's just phenomenal just seeing our possession from defense all the way up to forwards. It's just starting all to come together, and I can't wait for Thursday's match. It fell. The Black Bears fell 6 to nothing to New Hampshire in their regular season game a few weeks ago. Wildcats are second in the conference in goals, and Maine's struggling defense will be put to the test again. Other keys to the game will be sticking to their own style of play, creating a clean slate with the regular season behind them. They ha definitely have a lot of great players, especially um, in their offensive end, so just making sure that we're keeping track of them. But off that, just maintaining our own style and playing as main in that game is really key for us as well. It's kind of like a new start to our season, so this is like season three for us, so it's like fresh start, ready to get back out there and get on a winning streak and kick some butt, I think. All right, looking forward to that. Good luck to them. That is all the time we have for sports. Here's Conrad Sapinski with your full five-day forecast. Conrad. Thank you so much. Our main weather is brought to you by the Blue Alpaca Ranch and Store. Visit a ranch and meet the alpacas or shop in our store in downtown Belfast. All right, guys, we had some snow in the area. Brownville around three and a half inches. Greenville close to four inches of snow. Dover Foxcroft around an inch of snow. You got to go north of that to get into some really, really accumulative snowfall. Here in town, just saw a mixture of some uh, snow and rain. Mainly a rain event in town. Same thing right by the coast. Of course, no snow accumulations down there. Overall, though, we have cleared up, but there's another system right behind that one. It is in Chicago right now, actually. Wow, what a white Halloween, right? It's not even Christmas, but a white Halloween in Chicago. That system is very small. It's not actually going to be in our area. We are actually going to stay clear the next couple of days, actually. So temperatures will be warming up as well from 40s even into some 50s, so get ready for that. Earlier today, though, we did see a mixture of some clouds and sun. Mainly stayed sunny, though, with temperatures back in those lower 40s. Of course, that cold front came by. Most of the country has really cooled off. Raleigh, Atlanta have cooled off. They were in the 80s just 24 hours ago. But of course, warm spot, you got to go down to Florida, Jacksonville, Tampa, Orlando, and of course, down by Miami, they are in the 80s. Low temperatures this morning, though, we were hovering around the freezing mark. A couple of uh, spots below freezing. Bar Harbor, we got Rockland at around 30 degrees earlier today, but check up up north. Greenville, 27 degrees. They have some couple inches of snow on the ground still, and of course, fresh snowpack. Those temperatures were going to be cool anyways, and they will be cold once again. By tomorrow morning, we're looking at temperatures in the teens, even some 20s here in town. We're talking mid-20s outside, and then warming back up to around 41 degrees. 46 by Thursday, 
Look what happens Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're getting lucky with temperatures back at around 51, 52 degrees, so low to mid 50s. And then we're slowly going to cool back off into the 40s by beginning of next week. So don't worry, warmer air is not that long away. For tonight though, we're gonna see some low to mid 20s in the area, mostly clear skies and that wind will be calm. So of course with those clear skies, calm winds, that's gonna allow that cold air to really settle down, down to pretty much the surface here in town. For tomorrow, though, a nice rebound. We're talking 41 degrees as a high temperature, mostly sunny skies once again, so just a few passing clouds and a light breeze. Our extended forecast outlook does show those warmer temperatures finally rolling back Perfect timing, I would say, for Friday, Saturday into Sunday. We might actually see some sprinkles possible by Sunday in temperatures in those lower 50s. I have to say, I'm, I'm fairly happy to see that the sprinklage yeah. <laughs> is minimal. It's a very, very scientific term. Right, right? The exactly. The sprinklage is minimal to none through most of the rest of this week. Yes. And not even really seeing that until Sunday. I think, you know, kind of easing into the cooler temperatures, you do without the rain. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Uh, cold and wet, not a great yeah. combo, but just regular cold and, or cool, I should say, yeah. with some sun. That, that sounds good it to me. It keeps the leaves crunchy. Exactly. They have to crunch when you step <laughs> on them. <laughs> All right, well, there is still more to come. Stay with us. When it comes to fixing your car, you should have a choice. But out-of-state automakers are starting to restrict access to your car's mechanical data. That means local independent repair shops like mine. And mine, mine too, will lose their ability to diagnose problems and make repairs. Forcing you to expensive dealerships. Right to Repair will protect your choice. Your choice. It's your car. Get it fixed where you want. Please vote yes on question four. Yes on Right to Repair. This Veterans Day, join Fox ABC Maine as we salute and honor our veterans. Are you an active, inactive, or retired member of the armed services? Do you know someone who is? Then upload your photos on foxbangor.com slash Maine Heroes. We will randomly select multiple veterans to win a gift voucher from Chick-fil-A. Locally sponsored by Chase's Family Restaurant, Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, Herman Meadow Golf Club, and Leo and Sons Auto Repair. Saving for higher education for my kids is super important to my husband and me because we obviously want to give them opportunities to explore whatever their passion might be. I kind of consider it as a non-negotiable. I have to pay my electric bill, I've got to pay my heat bill, and I'm going to put money aside for my kids' higher education. To learn more about NextGen 529, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the program description at nextgenforme.com. Check if your home state has a 529 plan that offers tax or other benefits. Renovating or building new, you'll find a wide selection of high-performing, energy-efficient, and beautiful windows and doors at Hammond Lumber Company. Your Hammond sales representative will walk you through the showroom displays and help you choose options to create a personalized, custom look. Free in-home measurement is available, and Hammond can deliver your order from any of their locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Bring your vision and enjoy better light and added security and energy savings with quality windows and doors from Hammond Lumber Company. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. Tonight, the ground war inside Gaza as Israel retaliates for Hamas attacks. The global outcry for citizens and hostages in the crossfire. More Americans turn to the most watched newscast on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. in Dover Foxcroft is all decked out for Halloween. Our Kelly Warren takes us to see the spooky sights there. This my expectations. <laughs> While this house may look haunted, it's actually the result of months of hard work by Dover Foxcroft's McKenney family. We get excited every year for this and 
enjoy all the people that come out and we just enjoy doing it for the kids and all the adults and kids that stop by to see it. This is the second year in a row the family has worked on an elaborate Halloween display. This year's setup boasts a handmade 30-foot pirate ship that the family has worked on for quite some time. Oh gosh. How many hours, Phil? A lot. <laughs> McKenny says an estimated 70% of her display is handcrafted, with the main exceptions being 12-foot tall robotic creatures. She designs every piece of the setup, from a detailed graveyard to a ragtag band of skeleton pirates. It's a labor of love for the family as they hope to spread joy during the season. We make things that um, people can be able to put their children on to take pictures like the bench or in front of the, the ship and just stuff so they can have memories with their children. In Dover Foxcroft, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. You just have to marvel at that is an astronomical amount of work even if they hadn't made any of it and it just had to set it all up let alone the fact that yeah. they've made a lot of those things just an incredible display yeah. everything from uh, the figures the pirate ship all the way down to the jack-o-lanterns yeah. with such detail in them so uh, congrats and uh, thanks for spreading that halloween cheer indeed <laughs> yeah. everybody be safe happy halloween happy halloween everyone